There's no one like my King. He's the only one. He is the only one. The only one that can do like you do. My God, no one can touch me like you do. No one can touch my heart like you do. My God, no one can touch me like you do. No, no one can touch us like you do. My God, like you do. My God, you look deep within. You're looking deep within. You're looking deep within. And you're changing us, Lord. You're changing our hearts. You're changing our hearts. You make me just like you. You're making me just like you, my God. You're making us just like you, my King. You're making us just like you, my God. We're getting changed into your image, my Lord. We're gonna look just like you, my God. We're gonna look like you. We're gonna walk like you. We're gonna do all the things you said we would do. We're gonna do the miracles, the signs, the wonders, and all those things just like you do, my God. We're gonna do everyone just like you, my King. You're making us like you. You're making us just like you, my God. Yes, you've been searching us out, searching us out. You've been looking deep within our hearts, my God. You're looking deep, my God. You're looking deep, and you're bringing us up. You're bringing us up to be just like you, to be like you. We want to be like you, my Lord, my God. We want to look like you. We want to walk like you. We want to do what you do, my God. We're just going to look for you, Lord. We're going to keep on running. We're going to keep on going. We're never going to go away. We're never walking back. We're always going forward. We're looking for you. We want to find you, Lord. We want to keep on going after you, my God, because there's none like you. There's none like you. We searched the world over and we never could find another one like you. No, we look all over, my God. We look everywhere, Lord, and we never find one just like you. So we're looking real deep. We're going with you. Yet yeah, we're running with you. There's there's no other God, there's no other place, there's nowhere to go, Lord, but into your grace. Hallelujah. Sing hallelujah. Sing hallelujah to our God. Glory to his name. We're going deeper with you. We're going deeper with you. Yes, we're looking real good. We're looking at you, my Lord and my King. There's none like you, none like you that can do what you do. Hallelujah. Sing hallelujah. Sing hallelujah to the Lord our God. He's coming and he's going to visit us right here in this place. Yes, he's coming here now. He's coming to this place. We're gathered in his name and he's coming and then he's going to visit us right here in this place. Yes, He's coming in this place today. He's going to visit with you. He's going to visit with me. He's looking for us now. He's been searching us out. He's been searching you out. He's been searching me too. He's looking deeper in your heart. He wants more of you. Yes, he wants more. Yes, he wants more. He wants more of your heart, and he wants more of mine, and he's searching you out. He's searching you out. Yes, he's searching you out. No one can touch your heart like he does. No. No one can touch me like you do, my king. No one can look up on me and melt me away. You overwhelm me, my God. You overwhelm my heart. You overwhelm me, my God. You're looking deep in my heart. You overwhelm me, my Lord. There's no one can do what you do, my King. So I'm going to look to you. I'm going to look to you, Lord. I'm going to cry out for more of your love, my God. 
more of your grace, more of your glory, more of your presence, right here in this place, right here in this place, we want more, my God, we want you right here in this place, my King, we want more of your mercy and grace, we want you to come and visit with us now, come visit with us now, come riding in the Lord, we want to See your face come visit with us, Lord. Come into this place. Come riding in here, Lord. We're looking for more. Hallelujah. Sing hallelujah. Sing hallelujah to the Lord our God. Lord, hallelujah. Lord, hallelujah. We want more of you, Lord. We want more of you, Lord. We want to see your face. We want to look upon you, Lord. We want to look upon your face, my God. We're looking for you, Lord. We're looking for you, my God. We're looking for you this day to come in this place and visit us now with your glory and grace. Hallelujah. Sing glory, glory, hallelujah to our God. Glory to you.
you put me on a rock, my God, you took me out. You took me out of that. You took me out of all of that miry clay, Lord, and you set my feet on the rock on that day, and you made a way. Yes, you made a way. You made a way for me, my Lord and my King. You always made a way for me and all of these. Hallelujah, we sing you, Lord, the great Lord, where you be king. I looked the world over, Lord my God, and I never found one like you, my King. You know, I, I never found another one like you, so I'm going to put my wagon to yours. Hallelujah, and hallelujah, I'm going to hook my wagon to you, my God. I'm never going to let you go, never let you go. I'm never going to let you go, my God. You, you're the only one that can touch my heart like you do, my God, like you do, my King. Well, you're touching my heart, you're touching my heart, you're touching my heart right now, my God. Yes, you're touching my heart, you're touching my heart, and you're the only one that can touch my heart like you do, my God, like you do, my God. There's never been one like you who can search the whole world and never find another one like you. We can search the world, but we'll never find another one like you, Lord, like you, my God, but you're the king. Yes, you're the king, and you know how to touch my heart. You touch my heart, my God, you touch my heart like nobody else, no, no one can touch me. No one can touch my heart like you do, my God. No one can touch my heart like you do, my God. No one can touch me. No one can touch me like you do, my King. No one can touch my heart like you do. You overwhelm me, though. You overwhelm my heart. You overwhelm my heart, my God. You overwhelm me. You overwhelm me. Lord and my King, you overwhelm me. You overwhelm my heart. No one can touch my heart like you do, my God. You overwhelm me. You overwhelm me. You overwhelm my heart. Every time I look to you, you're, you got me in your search like God. You overwhelm me. You overwhelm me. You want to take me to a higher place, my God. You overwhelm me. You overwhelm my heart. There's no one can touch me just like you do. You overwhelm my heart. You overwhelm me, though. You're the only one to touch my heart like you do. You overwhelm me. You overwhelm me. You overwhelm us, my God. You overwhelm my heart. I searched the world and I never found another one just like you, just like you. No, there's never been another one just like you. You're the only one, the only one that can touch my heart, just like you do. You touch my heart, you overwhelm me, oh, you touch my heart. Always. 
Wait 10 days. Come on. 10 days. You just wait 10 days. 
days yes. until they didn't know what they were waiting for. <laughs> Most people don't know what they're waiting for. Yeah. They're just waiting. Yeah. What are you waiting for? Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you. We wait not as those that have no hope. Amen. We work not as those that have no reward. Right. But we're waiting for the coming of the war. I have one of these mats that cover my my front of my car. And when they worked, when they tried to fix air condition, they pulled everything loose. You know, it was attached. I had to get little things to attach it down. Well, I'm driving down the road and the whole thing went drop right up in front of me. I couldn't even see how to drive. I'm trying to wiggle it back on the dash. And my car's going this way and that way and this way. And I looked, there was nobody behind me. I prayed a prayer the other day. I said, Lord, I'm tired of coming out of my drive, and i got to invite 50 cars to get on the street from my house. Now, I declare the, car, the traffic is not going to be there when I drive out. And for three weeks, there's been no traffic when I come out of my drive. Three weeks. I'm going somewhere. Come on. we got to use the authority that's in us. I'm trying to tell you something. It'll shake up the kingdom of the devil. Amen. It'll work a work like you've never seen. Right. And for five miles over here, I'm wrestling with that thing. I put it back up and it comes flying back. And everything on the, underneath it comes flying all over the car. Well, I'm going somewhere and it's going to obey me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We have power in us. Yeah. Like Jesus did when the winds were blowing and Peter wanted to walk on the water. Come on, we can speak and the winds will obey. Yeah. And there's a spirit, the spirit of a great God in each one of us. Yeah. And there's a highway when we worship the Lord. God wants yeah. us to get on that highway. Yeah. I was reading about David this morning. He didn't, God didn't talk about anybody else but David. He said as long as the sun is in the air, the kingdom of David is going to exist. That's a scripture. He said, the sun. I believe we're going to have the moon. He said the moon and the sun was eternal. I'll read it to you out of the Bible. What does that mean? That means it's going to be day and night. Listen, in heaven, you need to get this, but not in the New Jerusalem. The sun, the Lamb of God, is going to be shining right there forever. It'll never be dark. I mean, he's going to be in the bride of Christ. The bride of Christ is going to be in the New Jerusalem. He didn't decide, well, I'm going to get rid of the moon and the stars. He didn't get rid of us. We all live forever. Forever. He makes things to last forever. And I want you to think about it. Your mind cannot comprehend. Woo! Hallelujah. David come dancing in. Here comes the king. I'd like to see Biden come dancing down the street. Give us a break. The Bible says, because he was coming with the ark. You're coming with the presence of the Lord, is what I'm trying to tell you. Amen. Thank you, God. Yeah. We're people of the light, yeah. not of the darkness. That's right. Hallelujah. Amen. Age has nothing to do with it. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Hallelujah. He's the rock of ages. Amen. Hallelujah. He's the ancient of days. Try to declare that. The ancient of days. Amen. Hallelujah. Listen to this. I got excited this morning. I didn't know whether to jump over the moon or over the bed. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. So David and the elders of Israel and the captains over thousands went up to bring up the ark of the covenant of the Lord out of the house of Odin Edom with joy. Yeah. Some of you need to put on your tambourines. The heathen, he made known his power. Yes. You know who you know who heathen people are? They don't have a God. They don't worship him. 
But God has made us to worship Him. Yeah. To worship Him. Hallelujah. Yeah. To talk to Him. Yeah. Glory. You talking about favor. You haven't seen the favor you're going to get if we learn how to exalt Him. That's right. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. This morning I got up and I, I wasn't running lunch. You know, it's Friday. The trash is there. I'm going to move the cans. And they come at two different times and open the gate. And, get the car. and the list goes on and on and on. I thought, no, I'm going to sit on the chair and praise the Lord a little while. Amen. So I did for about 15 minutes. <laughs> it's me, Lord. Hallelujah. It's me. Yeah. He said, call unto me and I'll answer you and show you great and mighty things you don't know about. Hallelujah. Great and mighty things. Strange things. God wants to show us strange things. Yeah. <laughs> That's why we're strangers of this world. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We're strangers to this world. We're put here to get others saved. I'm reading this. And it came to pass when God helped the Levites, this 15th chapter of 1 Chronicles, that bear the ark of the covenant of the Lord, they offered seven bullocks and seven rams. Do you know what a bloody mess that must have been? Amen. But we don't have to smell it anymore. Jesus says, when I see the blood, I'll pass over you. Yeah, yeah. Come on, you got to get excited about everything in the Bible. Yeah. When I see the blood, yeah. I will pass over you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And David was clothed with a robe of fine linen. Everybody in this room needs to find you something made out of linen. Linen, yeah. linen is a sign of righteousness. Yeah. It's cool in the summer and warm in the winter. So is silk. And all the Levites that bear the ark and the singers and the master of the song with the singers, David also had upon him an ephod of linen. And all of Israel, wouldn't it be nice if all of the United States would bring up the ark? Yeah. So all of Israel brought it up. Everybody was one accord. Everybody went to church on Sunday. Hallelujah. There wouldn't be any place to park the cars. <laughs> Glory to God. Glory to God. Recognize God. Honor God. Amen. Honor Him in everything. In everything. He said in everything it had breath. I was reading this and it was describing how they came. Listen. They bought up the ark of the covenant of the Lord with shouting. That was your time to shout. Ah, <laughs> with shouting. With the sound of the cornet. With trumpets. With cymbals. Making a noise with psalteries and harps. And as it came to pass, as the ark of the covenant of the Lord came to the city of David, that Micah, the daughter of Saul, looking out the window, saw King David dancing and playing, and she despised him <coughs> in her heart. She couldn't identify with him. The world cannot identify with the church. It doesn't understand who we are. Saturday, we went to a meeting with Mario Morello, Lance Wallnall. There was a man named Gabriel, Barry Gabriel, in Scottsdale. He had a house that went around the block. McGuire. About 300 of us were there. Carrie Lake was there. Lance Warner kept saying, I'm Pentecost, I'm Pentecost. He didn't say it once, he said it once. Yeah. And he prayed over Carrie, over Carrie Lake. Have I got her name right? Yeah. She said how she'd given up her job. She went to her husband. Shall we give it up? It was a nice paying job. He gave her a word. You don't have to worry about money. The Lord said, will take care of you. Wow. Are you listening? If God can bring manna down from heaven, come on. Yeah. Yeah. Think about it. Amen. They didn't have any wash machines or any place to wash their clothes. I wonder how they smelled. <laughs> But they had the presence of the Lord by day and by night for 40 years. Yeah, yeah. Listen. Yeah. I can tell some people don't have the presence of the Lord. I'm not being ugly here. They don't have any joy. No joy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They don't have any hallelujahs. Amen. You got to live on the hallelujah side. Hallelujah. 
Yeah. <laughs> used to sing this song, Oh, glory be to Jesus, let the hallelujahs roll. Amen. I can sing my Savior's praises far and wide, for I'm open up to heaven to all the windows of my soul, and I'm living on the hallelujah side. They don't sing that song anymore. We have to get back out and make a few copies. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That means he rides in majesty. When you say hallelujah. And I had him to speak to me this morning. And he began to declare in me that he's going to do something awesome. Unexpected. He's going to show himself strong in the midst of his enemies. What people don't understand, if the Lord just moved his little finger, it might shake up about four nations. They don't understand that. The power that's in him. Yes. That's right. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So we get a little thimble full at a church service every once in a while. What's going to happen when he pours out the bucket? Oh, what you got in your bucket? Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. He's going to come according yeah. to the yeah. weight of your praises, yeah. of your worship, yeah. of your excitement. Yeah. Woo! Of what he can do. Yeah. He is Lord. He is God. He's King. He's Savior. Whatever you want him to be. Yeah. church service. My friend is with me. I just closed my eyes. The music was wonderful. I put up one. What was going to happen if I put up two? Two could chase 10,000. And my friend whispered in my ear. She said, Sister Ruth, everybody's watching. I said, what am I doing? She said, you got your hand up. Oh, my eyes and everybody, they never raised their hands. But at least it means I surrender. And I'm reaching. It means victory. Come on. Woo. It means I'm receiving. I'm wanting more. More, Lord. More. Right now, Brown said to the Lord, he's praising me. And he said, if you don't come down here and bless me, I'm going to come up there and bless you. That's how he got to where he is. Today. And he said that. He said, the power of God came down from the heavens. It was so much. He said, Lord, no more. You're, you're killing me. This is real. He said, Lord, you're killing me. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. the church is dead, Lord. Can't kill them anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, not, I, I'm not mad at you. I'm just telling you I expected more. Yeah. I expected more. Yeah. 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 I'll be honest with you. I came out here and I expected more. Jesus. I said, Lord, are the people saved? <laughs> people that are saved look strange looking. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may be able to take my doctrine, but you can't take the revelation that he is Lord. And when you go after him, you got to go after him. Yeah. He said to Joshua, yeah. get the people ready. They haven't yeah. come this way before. Yeah. They have not come. And he even told them they had to keep a distance from one another. It was like they were unclean if they touched each other. That was under the law. Well, they probably had a bath forever. <laughs> True. He told them to put on, wash the clothes and put on clean clothes and take a bath. He said, men and women, you can't have anything to do with each other. You're going to cross this Jordan. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. You want the promises? You got to cross the Jordan. Amen. You got to come to the other side. I'm talking to me. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yes. Thank you, Lord. 
We had that wonderful meeting, something happened. It was a political thing, and a statesman sit down. Was it a statesman that sit down in front of me? Representative. Representative. She's new on the block. Tucson. And I started talking to her. I didn't tell her other than I was a Christian. I said, are you a Christian? <laughs> uh -oh. That's a good question. And then I asked her, do you speak in tongues? <laughs> <laughs> then I asked her, do you have prophecy in your church? All right. We didn't know about prophecy. I said, well, I'm going to tell you, we had a word from the Lord, and he said he'd save the best people for last, and I'm one of them, and you're one of them. Amen. 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 I only got to say a few words, and then her husband wanted to know right away that I think Trump was going to win. I said, if he does the will of the Lord. I said, you got to know that Trump, Truman, and Nixon were put in office just for Israel, and Israel is the battle plan. you got to know that Israel is the plumb line. Israel is the sign. Yes. I'm not going to stay in America if Jesus comes. Hallelujah. <laughs> but I like it. Amer it's like a miracle when you say America. you got to see the spiritual side of what God does. Yes. 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 Hallelujah. And, I, and I said to him, I said, I'm not being nonchalant, but I don't really care who God puts in the White House. Yeah. As long as they do the will of the Lord. You don't really care right. where your money comes from as long as you get it. Right. Come on. Amen. I'll bring it down. As long as you get it. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. I'm going to get the best deals. Hallelujah. Are you listening? The best deals. When I saw how I came out of my driveway this morning, not a car coming left or right. And every time I've been out in the last few days, not one car. I said, Lord, I live here and I pay my taxes and I'm tired of fighting this traffic every time I come out of my driveway. Come on. Speak to those things that are not as if they were. Speak to them. Amen. I took my car in to get my tires rotated. And I thought, you got to, you got discernment in you. I thought, now this is part of the plan. They don't rotate my tires. But I thought they're not going to do it. I wasn't doubting. I just knew in my spirit. So I marked them. You, women, you got to do these things if you want to keep your tires on your car. So I go back to get my car. I said, did you rotate my tires? And he started to say, yeah. And he stopped. He said, no, I didn't. I said, I know you didn't because I marked them. <laughs> I didn't have to tell him that. Right. But all of us need to come with the spirit of truth. Yeah. Yeah. Truth that will make you free and give you liberty and never end your life. Yeah. 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 Come on, you won't have a concern. Listen, I know what I'm talking about. I've been arrested yeah. by communist guards in China over a little, little, just a little situation. And he's yelling at me, wanting me to know where my friend is. She got upset about something and left me. He said, where's your friend? I said, I don't know. He asked me three times. And every time he asked me, he got louder. And every time I answered that loud. I said, I'm telling you, I did like this. I don't know where she is. <laughs> and you saw the look in my face, buddy. A bulldog was coming after you. <laughs> you got to be bold. Yeah. He said to Joshua, be bold, be strong, for the Lord thy God is with you. Yeah. He's yeah. with you. Yeah. He's with you. He yeah. said, lo, the last thing he said in Matthew, lo, I am with you. Yeah. It was yeah. the first words Jesus ever <clears throat> spoke to me. I said, Lord, can I hear your voice? And I pray, I got on my knees for two hours. And I thought, well, he's probably not going to speak. And just as I was getting a pathway, mm -hmm. lo, I am with you even to the ends of the Amen. world. Amen. That was the first words he ever spoke to me. Amen. Hallelujah. What's your first words? Come on, Hallelujah. What's your first words he ever spoke to you? Come on. You, you got to get a book of remembrance here. Yeah. Yeah. Write it down. Write it on the walls. Write it on the doorposts. Write it on the mirrors. Write it. Hallelujah. He said, make the vision plain. Yeah. Hallelujah. You wonder, what the world are you doing? I'm staring myself because I didn't feel good this morning. Hallelujah. Amen. The Bible said, David encouraged himself in the Lord. Amen. He encouraged himself. Amen. He was a man after God's heart. Uh -huh. The church has got to go after God's heart. Yeah. Lord, what do you want? Amen. What do you want? What is hidden in me? You're trying to get out of me. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Amen. I saw some exploits recently. Somebody wanted a gyro, Greek gyro, whatever that is. So we went to get one. <laughs> and the man that waited on us, my friend had a word of knowledge for him. He came over to the table and sat down beside her and hugged her and said, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. That happened five times to us in two days. Wow. I mean, the people tried to get inside of us. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. You need for them to ask you. Yeah. I remember a lady came to our church one time. She didn't even know it was a church. She wanted to get married. She said, who are you people? She's listening to Sister Ruth like this. She never sat down. She stood the whole time Ruth preached. She said, she came over to me, who are you people? I said, how'd you find us? In a telephone directory. I said, we're a church. We're a church. We're talking about God. We're praising God. Yes. We're worshiping God. Yes. Amen. We used to sing a song, let's talk about Jesus. The King of Kings is he. I know this is going on all over the world. The Lord of Lords Supreme through all eternity. The great I am the way, the truth, the life, the door. Let's talk about Jesus more and more. The church has got to discover Jesus. Yeah. Amen. That means yeah. you're going to have revelation all day yes. long. Yeah. Yeah. And we yeah. see yeah. what is hidden. Hallelujah. And believe me, he's got a lot enough to last for eternity. Yeah. For every person. I want you to think about it. Yeah. For every person. Yeah. For every person. Yeah. Here comes King David. The Bible says he was ready. I always wondered what that mean. It means he was like a ruby. That's what that means. He was like a ruby. Hallelujah. He did. Well, he said about virtuous women, but he was talking about the church when he says, who could find a virtuous woman? He's talking about the church. Wow. Yes. Yes. Who can find her? Her price is far above rubies. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You'll always keep singing that song. He's still working on me. I don't know anymore. I just know he's working. Hallelujah. He's working. Night and day and day and night. Listen. So they brought the ark of God and set it in the midst of the tent that David had pitched for it. They offered Bird sacrifices and peace offerings. You need to look it up and study. It'll take you a week or two. It has to be a sacrifice. A living sacrifice unto him. I got this new song. Holy and acceptable, pure and good. A living sacrifice unto him. Hallelujah. And when David had made an end of offering the burnt offerings and the peace offerings, he blessed the people in the name of the Lord. Listen, it wasn't an hour Sunday morning service. I can hardly eat a hamburger with somebody in an hour. That's weird. The people over in the Black Sea spent six hours eating their meals. I watched them. I was there. Wow. They eat for six hours. They talk a little and they eat. They eat and they talk. The family setting is left the house. It's the round table for all discussion. My mother would tell my father everything that we had done at the supper table. Oh my, before we did it. And our eyes were down like this. And we'd look up, and my father would be looking at us with those eyes. The Bible says, My eyes shall guide you. It's all about revelation. Revelation shall guide us of who we are. You might think, Well, I just think I'll go over here. Where you have God's mind and God's thoughts. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Nothing is too valuable to give to God. Nothing. Amen. Nothing. 
You'll never be able and I'll never be able to declare the cost of the cross. The pain, the passion of Christ. That movie arrested everybody that came to see it. They couldn't drink their drink or eat their popcorn. Yeah. It was so quiet that movie house, she didn't even hear them put down the seats. I was there. I thought, is everybody dead? It was so quiet. When we got through watching the movie, the popcorn and the drinks were still sitting on the floor. They were drinking of the Lord and eating. He said, unless you can eat of my flesh and drink of my blood. Unless you can participate in what the cross is all about. He's already carried it. We get a few splinters. Hallelujah. He's making a list and he's checking it twice. If you can hear, he'll speak through anything. He spoke through a rooster and a donkey. The donkey said to Balaam, don't you even see that angel there in the middle of the road? He's about to kill us. You know, nobody uses the hammer like that. But you've got to eat it all. Drink it all. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just when we thought it was all in order, a wind will come. The wind of the Spirit. I mean, I while you're walking on the street and I heard the voice of the Lord awaken, O oh, north wind. I thought, oh, that's in the Bible. I know it is. <laughs> and it is. It talks about you don't want an east wind. Those are the ones that are like tornadoes. Kind of like the south wind. Hallelujah. He wants to talk to us in ways we haven't heard his voice before. Most people just want blessings. You know, when I told the Lord recently, I don't want any of the blessings if I'm going to mess with you have with me. I don't want it. I'd rather be poor and lonely. You know what he says about the poor in the spirit? You know what he says about people that don't have much? He's the one he's going to, we're the ones he's going to take care of. Yeah. Yeah. We don't have much in the natural, but a whole lot of God in the spirit. Come on. A whole lot of God. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. I remember the first time I saw the Jewish people. I'm a young girl. Somehow I went to the airport with somebody and I came home and I said, Mother, I saw these people at the airport today. I've never seen anybody like them. They kind of look like us, and they look like Christians, but they're not Christians, but they are Christians. I'm trying to describe to my mother about the black coats and the curls and the black hats. My mother couldn't explain to me. But it was such a mystery that it stayed in my mind and heart for years as a young girl until I found a book and read it. When God leaves something on your mind, he wants you to search it out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God wants to multiply some things in our life. Yes. The Bible says while they were given the peace and the burnt offerings and blessing the name of the Lord, it says he dealt, David dealt to everyone of Israel, both man and woman, to everyone a loaf of bread, a good piece of flesh, and a flagon of wine. That word for a flagon of wine, a better word, is a raisin cake. And he anointed certain of the Levites to minister before the ark of the Lord and to record. To record. How many of you have journals? My house is full of them. Yeah. I have a friend said, I want you to leave me all your journals. I said, but you wouldn't understand it unless you experienced what I've written in there. That's how I root for it. All eight of her books. She'd just write a word on each page. And then her publisher would get on the key uh, on the computer and sh she'd start talking and he'd start typing. Eight books. Most people have to write it at least two or three times before it passes the test. Come on, spirit is spirit and flesh is flesh. Amen. Amen. God is looking for people that's born of the spirit. Born 
born of the spirit and not of the flesh. If you're after the flesh, it's fleshly things. Of the spirit, you're wanting heaven to come down. Amen. Glory to God. And this is what's happening today. A lot, there's a lot of people that are talented and have great gifts, but they don't know how to flow. And I've talked to you about this last week. I'm just telling you what this glory is all about. You'll suddenly just feel it. You'll know it. You'll understand it. And these rhythms, we, we used to have many days of great rhythms. We were in the heavens and not in the earth. We never worship. He said, on earth as it is in heaven. What does he mean? Bring it down. Bring it down. And worship him the way kings and priests should worship. Hallelujah. Bring it down. Bring it down. The heavens are all, all, always open, but you've been given the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Yeah. Bring it down. Look what the Lord has done. That song never gets old. Hallelujah. He healed my body. He touched my mind. He saved me just in time. I've got one of my greatest hits now. Come on, get away. Hallelujah. The crazy. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, <laughs> What's the crazy music? Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. The Lord spoke to me in 50 years ago. He began to give me an outline of my life. These people who keep searching for their destiny, they get the outline, fill in the blanks. Yes. Yeah. Okay. He said, Ruth, your heart belongs to Judah. What was he saying to me? I was going to be a worshiper. So what he said to me, your heart belongs to Judah. I thought he was talking about some man in my life. I thought, well, well, I didn't know what it was all about concerning Judah. But, but, but I want you to remember what I'm going to tell you right now. This is very important. It's a key. I said, Lord, I don't know any Judah. He said, he spoke to me. He said, Judah was a lawgiver. Well, that's the scripture in Genesis. I think it's about somewhere 49, 50 chapter. Judah was a lawgiver. Judah was a lawgiver. What am I saying to you? He said, they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. You got to get this. This is what it means. When we worship him in spirit and in truth, do you know what I'm going to say? It puts the law into effect. The law of God. God begins to bring his orders into the earth. We can't keep copying other people's songs and music. Yeah. He's wonderful, counselor, mighty God, father, prince of peace, the great I am. We glorify the Lamb. He's wonderful, counselor, mighty God, Father, Prince of Peace, the great I am. We glorify. Let me tell you, he's wonderful, counselor, mighty God, Father, Prince of Peace, the great I am, we glorify the Lamb. Things happen. 
we by accident declare the word in the word of the Lord. Just by accident. Hallelujah. Create a room. Amen. Amen. Make room for the glory. Make room. And I'll never forget he said to me, I'm struggling trying to prophesy. He didn't call me to be a prophet. He told me he called me to be a worshiper. Then he said, I've made you an intercessor. He said this to me one day. He said, that's the highest calling I can give anyone. Amen. That's what he said. Because you're a watchman. Amen. My book is never going to end of what God's done for me. Amen. He's still writing. And I'm still learning. We're talking about a relationship here. We try to teach people seven steps, but it only takes one. You take one step. Come on, go take two. We need, our theme song should be, Oh, How I Love Jesus. Because he first loved me. I've escaped death so many times. The devil knows. I don't even like to yeah. call his name. He knows those who belong to the Lord. That's right. That's right. He knows. That's right. Amen. And he'll do everything to irritate you and stop you. That's a good sign. You want a sign? You want signs and wonders? Just let everything go wrong. You know God is right. Amen. I got one hand. Right? On. God is right. Hallelujah. He's right. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. He said, You'll be hated by all men for what? My name's sake. Amen. You mention a name like the Rothschilds. What do you think about? Wealth, money, power. The Rothschilds, are, I think, are the richest people in the world. But they're not richer than God. Right. He can give to everybody. They can't. Come on. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. Amen. Come on. He's more than enough. More than enough. Amen. Glory to God. You got we God wants us to do that. Lord, you're more than enough. Yeah. He said, when your father and your mother forsake you, I'm a many breasted one. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> He just doesn't have to sense their meal cutting. He's got the bread too, and the meat, and the glory. Yes. We used to sing a song. I got a lot of songs. He's the glory and the lifter of my head. Yes. Hallelujah. <laughs> yes. And if you can't think of the words of the song, I was singing, I'm his little buttercup. I thought that was part of the song. I was singing, and everybody's looking at me. Oh, what's wrong? But I thought that was a song. <laughs> One day I, I said, let's everybody open up to the Queen of Sheba. <laughs> I was very sincere. And that's in the chapter one of them Old Testament books, Kings and Chronicles. Everybody's looking at me. I said, I said, the tenth chapter of the Queen of Sheba. God, God had me to say it accidentally to explode the church. The people started to laugh and their feet went up in the air. They were sitting in the seat. I thought, what's wrong with these people? I didn't catch it until after the Holy Ghost had lit the fire. All of our services have been strange services. Come on, God wants to work something strange. Hallelujah. Woo. He doesn't want us to see, well, what shall I wear today? You know, people come on the platform with beach hats and <laughs> holes all in their pants. <laughs> oh, my goodness. They're fighting this to be lit. <laughs> Just be simple. Woo! And watch God. Yeah. One day, Sister Waddyman, you don't know her, but Sister Ramona does. And, boy, she was high maintenance, wasn't she? And she said, she just stood one day and she kicked her foot and she said, he's the best husband I've ever had. He keeps chicken in my freezer. And her shoe went flying through the air. Listen to this. True story. A lady was in the crowd that owned a shoe factory. 
And she brought us a thousand pair of shoes. Yeah. 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 I can tell you 2,500 stories like that. Well, maybe not 2,500, but I probably could. Just strange things. And listen, when God puts it out there, just bite. Bite the bullet. We heard a sermon Sunday about David and Jonathan. He said, Sister Ruth, what are you doing? I'm staring you up. Jonathan did not love. David enough to leave home. You heard the story all the time about his love for David, but not enough to leave home. And he wouldn't have died on the battlefield the way he did if he had joined David. Why don't you think about it? But he remember he told him he had the arrows I'm going to shoot them and yeah. if they go a certain way you do this, they go another way you go that. No. The sermon was you got to go beyond the arrows. Oh, all I heard was the word arrow. Because when we were at Meriwether Morales service so the day before, I had a vision of an arrow with a little feather or something around it. I thought, oh God, what are you telling me? I saw it before I heard it preached. It was preached the next morning. I saw the arrow. I thought, oh, you want me to stretch myself. Do things I don't feel like doing and I don't want to do and it doesn't fit into my thinking. <laughs> And it sure happened the next day. Oh. Uh -huh. I had to get saved all over again. I had to repent, repent, <laughs> repent. Go on. What he was saying, go on to know the Lord. Go on to know him. To know him. Paul said, oh, yeah. that I might know him. And Jesus said, okay, we're going to keep you in jail most of your life. <laughs> you remember what he said to him? Paul was wondering, one, one, one arm head would take him here and pass him on to another head in another location. They're trying to get to Caesar. You know, they're trying to get to the top. Listen, Jesus has already brought you to the top yeah. of the ladder. Yeah. He said, the first thing he said before the wedding had came, the first miracle, he said, from this day, you're going to see angels ascending and descending. Mm -hmm. You're going to see your help coming. You're going to see how the heavens work in your life. The Bible says the heavens declare his handiwork, who he is. Just like look at the moon and the stars and the sun. Just look at it. Look at the, the seasons, how wonderful he is. Richard, you're looking at the sons of God that are being manifested. You're looking at one right now. I just thought I'd tell you that, okay? <laughs> We're all sons of God. Yeah. We're going to do the will of the Lord. Amen. And my coffers are full. Amen. The Lord has blessed me in such ways. That it goes in one hand, and then in the left hand puts it in the right hand. Yes. And he goes out. We want to be that kind of a people. What do you need, brother? The Bible says if he asks for your coat, give your coat to him. Give it to him, brother. Give it to him. God's got a great big storehouse. He's yeah. wanting to empty. Yeah. I had a vision one day of everything dancing on the shelves in heaven. And all we need to do is worship the Lord a little bit harder. It was going to fall in the earth. Wow. Come on, I'm telling you, God wants to do great things. Hallelujah. Yeah. Wonderful things. Awesome things. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But that, that spirit of truth has got to come. Hallelujah. That spirit of truth, are you listening? That spirit of truth. The spirit of truth. Sister Ruth used to come with a store list when she would come home. She said, this is what I need, and I'm, I'm waiting, you know, for the money to come with it. <laughs> All I get is the note of what she wants. She wanted a horse's bridle. Do you know what one of those cost? Uh, <laughs> a saddle, not a bridle, a saddle. And I'm storming down the stairs. She didn't see me then. I'm, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Where am I going to get the money? I don't even know how to look for one. And I walk into the cafeteria. I go, I leave her place and go down to the cafeteria. And this gentleman is sitting there. I'm in the cafeteria having coffee before the service started. He said, are you okay, Sister Ruth? I said, well, I was. <laughs> he said, what's wrong? I said, I need a horse to settle. He said, I have one. <laughs> Just, uh, I have one. I mean, 
thing she wanted curtains you can't you can't imagine. I, I used to pray she would come home once a year. <laughs> <laughs> but she'd leave out. Listen, she would leave out with suitcases and never have to pay extra on them. I'm telling you before God, more planes waited on her. She was always late. And the plane, something would happen to her, waiting for her to get there. The Lord wasn't too interested about everybody else trying to get where they were getting. Yeah. He was his plan. He was unfolding. you got to know this. Yeah. God's not going to bother with a lot of things if it's not in his plan. Yeah. Because people know there's a God. They have a conscience. And you've got to call unto him. Yeah. Search him out. Amen. Are you listening? Don't be mad at me. You'll get over it. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. He's a wonderful God. Yes. I can't even tell you the things that I say to him. You'd be embarrassed. He's so wonderful. Yes. Anybody, anybody, I've seen people talk to their dogs and kiss all over them and look at them because they love them. Yes. And they know the dogs aren't going to answer them back. No argument there. Just talk to the Lord. Yes. You're my sunshine. I remember I'm in a service one night, and he said, I want you to sing, You Are My Sunshine. So I went over to Michelle. You know Michelle, some of you did. We're up at Jim's place in Prescott. I said, I hear a song. She said, what is it? You are my sunshine. You make me happy when skies are gray. Well, where, where do you, I didn't find that in the handle. Yeah. And she begins to weep just all over her clothes, my musician. It was her father's favorite song to her. Yes. And God honored her that day because she missed her father. Yes. Was it part of a plan, sermon, or a schedule? No. Yes. God wants you to know what's of the spirit yes. and what pleases him. Yes. And great strength will come into your life that you didn't know you had. You'll do things that you read about like Elisha. Was it Elisha out ran the chariot? Come on. There's a scripture in Haggai or Hosea, I don't know which. It said in the last days the chariots would run like a lightning. Anybody ever read that? It, he was seeing cars today. He was seeing the lights and didn't know what it was. Yeah. Run like a lightning. Those chariots weren't running like lightnings. But today, cars would move fast with the lights. You know, I've been in London, and it's like, ugh, I feel like I'm lost here looking at all the traffic and the lights coming. I've been in different parts of the world. The traffic is heavy. But God has created us. We're spirit, and we're life. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So he told me I was going to be a missionary and an intercessor. He told me I was going to be a worshiper. And then he said to me one day, I'm struggling. Don't struggle. The baby is about to be born. He said this to me. I saw him. I was like a child in diapers crawling around on the floor. And he grabbed me right, back, right in the back of the diaper. I saw a vision. He said, stop struggling with me. I'm trying to put my glory on. Oh, it's a beautiful word, but what does he mean? My glory, my presence shall go with you. He said to Moses, but remember one time he said, I want to send my angel. He said, oh, no, I want your presence. Because angels are apt to do things right or left. He said, I want your presence to go with me. Your presence is like heaven to me. Now, I want to say something to you. There are wonderful songs that are being sung because they're scripture and they're of the Lord. But the right music is not with the songs. Yeah. Thank you. You see, you don't have to stop the music. Just everybody get in the rhythm. The rhythms that you move in are this. Here, give me some rhythm, some rhythm music, Richard. Come on, you got it. He's Jewish. Now, come on. Yeah. 
You know, Jesus was Jewish. I always remember that. There's sounds that are like teardrops. There's sounds that are like raindrops. There's sounds that are like glory drops. Like waterfalls and ripples. And it's just not a sound. He works in sound. And so God wants us to discern what is happening in a service. And don't miss the visitation. visitation of the Lord. In other words, we're not children anymore. We're led by the Spirit. So he doesn't want to have to... And listen, I know. I want to hear his voice. I don't care if he's scolding me. I don't care if he's rebuking me. Bruce, Bruce said this, just to hear his voice. It's like many waters. It'll just come and carry you to a new place. It will lift you you know what? Waves come up. There's a crescendo where they come up. There's a movement down underneath that makes them come up. The Bible says they applaud the Lord. And you're, listen, you're cooking and applaud the Lord because he gave you the missing ingredient. I love it when he gives me timing when I'm cooking. You might know what I'm talking about. Things just come together. Man, I'm shutting the drawers with my foot, refrigerator with my elbow, my finger on the cabinet door. You understand? It's just moving to the rhythms of heaven. I'll never forget, and I've told you this before, he said to my sister-in-law that couldn't cook, she couldn't cook, but she made some seven-minute icing. Is that what it is? Well, you just have to know how to do it. And so she's going to make it, and I thought, well, we're going to eat it, because I knew her cooking. And God touched it, and then he spoke to her. Here's what he said. This is what happens when I put my touch upon it. He spoke to her about her icing. I just want him to tell me, how am I doing today? Do I meet your requirements? They have a mezuzah. Maybe I'm not saying it right. You put on the door of the Jewish people. And they put a scripture in and out of numbers. It's about, the scripture is about the Lord causing his face to shine upon him. And they put it on the door face, and so they touch it with one hand going out and touch it with the other coming in. And I always wondered what that meant. Here's what it means. It means nothing bad is going to happen in my life when I leave this place until I return that will cause you to disapprove of me, Lord. Amen. That's what it means. I won't do anything bad until I return home. Because he's smiling on me. Hmm. I think it's at number six, isn't it? Yeah. Read it. So that people write it on paper and put a little mazoos. I've got one on my back door. Put one on the front door. Hallelujah. Put it in your car. It's just things that prove God. Prove, he said, prove me. Prove me and see. And see. Oh, taste and see. The good. That the Lord is good. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. In our ministry, I was there 20 years. Lived there. They were all Holy Ghost filled people. And I tell you, I can tell you, in 20 years, nobody ever had a fight with one another. In 20 years. Because the pastor had such a prophetic word. I mean, we I fasted before I went before him. Not that he spoke anything bad, but he, the word would weave its way into everything in your life because it's a creative word. It would bring order, bring direction. need the word and the prophetic word in the church. Yeah. There's a lot of horrifying things that are going to happen. 
that God's going to shield our heart, yes. that it won't take over and destroy us or confuse us. That bridge that went down, it's, I don't know about what I'm reading. You don't know what the enemy will do right. to get what they want. Right. Those things just don't happen. Right. But two days before it happened, I'm singing the Star Spangled Banner. Mm -hmm. I'm just singing it. Now, here's the thought that came to me. I thought, oh, that's in Maryland somewhere. And Francis Scott Key came to me, and I thought, you know, they built a bridge. It was like God was telling me, but you don't know what it is because he doesn't reveal the horror. But he lets you know something is coming, that you're going to be buffeted through it. I mean, you're going to be taken care of through it. Yeah. And it won't bother you. There's a lot that's going to happen. I thought about these people who've been here for years working from other countries. And they're gone. And listen, one of them, their family just was in an accident six years before and were killed. I mean, it's just rippling, rippling. Hide yourself in the Lord in everything. I don't leave my house almost ever without praying over it. Yeah. Lord, you gave me this house. Let no one, I remember I prayed, let no one come into mine. I'm trying to remember. I felt it kneel down and pray before I went for an appointment. I have a little altar there. And I said, Lord, don't let anybody hit my house today. I thought, where'd that come from? Yeah. Well, they hit my wall. I forgot to pray for my wall. <laughs> they knocked my wall down yeah. and ran into a tree. Yeah. So they had a little meeting of the city to come and help us in our neighborhood. And I went down and voiced my views. I said, it's really not my yard. I said, you, you need to do something about the speed limit here. My house has been hit four times. Four times. They come running with the paper to see what they can do. I said, no, that's not going to solve the problem. I said, the people are driving too fast. Mm -hmm. Yeah. My house next to the street, this is my bed right here, okay? Boom, boom. Mm -hmm. To where where you are with the red hat on. Put your hand up, Mary. Mary. Mary Ann, put your, just put your hand up. That's how close I am to the street. The track is running 40 to 60 miles an hour. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I've been going to bed every night for 24 years, and I've lived safely. Yeah. I had friends to come and stay with me. How, how, how do you sleep with this traffic? I said, just tune it out. Yeah. Tune it out. Yeah. I'm just telling you, everybody's got a little bucks. Just don't get termites. <laughs> and little things it's the little foxes that bother us it's the little things that weary us don't manifest the devil manifest the grace and the glory and the goodness and the beauty of the Lord yes. Woo! Yeah. Woo! I mean I felt like Quicksilver just ran through me whatever that is Anybody know what Quicksilver is? Mercury. Hallelujah. I mean, it'll date you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Wait till he tells you something's hurting, and I thought it was my blood pressure. I just thought it. And he spoke to me. He said, it's not your blood pressure. I said, are you going to tell me what it is? He said this, your colon is inflamed. Eat lightly. Well, I kind of overrode that, and he wasn't speaking to me too much about my health. Yeah, you can override it, but eating the wrong things are not taking care of what he told you to do. And so he told me that about four or five times, what was wrong with me. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah. He's the great physician. Yeah. Come on, he's the doctor, the yeah. lawyer, the counselor, and the judge. Yeah. I go to court. We're in the courts of heaven every time we come together. Yeah. Hallelujah. Come on, he's your God, and I will praise him. He's your Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, we need teachings on falling in love with Jesus. Falling in love with Jesus. You know, people are in love. I've seen couples in love. I thought, are they ever going to take a bath? Are they ever going to eat? Are they ever going to comb their hair? They're so in love they don't see any of that. They just love one another. 
I pray until death do his part. Hallelujah. That's what he wants, till death do his part. Till death do his part. Is anybody falling in love with Jesus now? Oh, Jesus. Wonderful counselor. Mighty God. I didn't picture. Come on. Come on. You got it, didn't you? You are worthy of it all. You are worthy of it all. You created everything. My to you, my song, I sing. You are worthy of it. You deserve the glory. Yeah. Hallelujah. Just play something, Richard. It's in you. Just play. Come on, make the way straight for the Lord. When we get to heaven, I believe, I believe we're going to worship the Lord for one million years. Yeah. Because we made it home. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb of God. Uh -huh. yeah. It's all about falling in love with Jesus.
There's a certain sound that tells you those race cars are ripping up their engines. It's a certain sound that plane makes before it takes off. It's a sound that you've got to awaken in the heavens and bring it into the earth. Hallelujah. I remember the men's convention. I just came around the building. The service started at 8 in those days. And they were playing the music. And I said this out loud. It was a men's convention. But that one had passed away, so Ruth was preaching at the men's convention. And I said these words. You might as well wrap it up. There'll be no preaching tonight. I prophesied. We, they never preached. They tried to, but they couldn't. The glory was there where everybody understood who Jesus was. The men were dancing on top of the tables. They hardly would ever even play a tambour, but they had shofars on top of the tables. Come on, the spirit is there. I can tell you when the spirit is not there and when it is. God is going to bring freedom, and whatever he has to do, he's going to do it. And then it will get to where it's like rain. It's a different rhythm. It's like a baby trying to stop. He falls down three or four times, doesn't he? When he eats, he throws food all over the place. But then he knows where his mouth is after a while. Yeah. God wants the church to know where their mouth is. He said, your tongue is a pen of a ready writer. Make the vision plain. Prophesy. Sing unto the Lord a new song. I didn't get this way overnight. I missed it so many times. Until God said to me one day, I'm going to put my glory on you and you're going to set people free. Amen. <laughs> yes. He told Pastor Maiden that I went out to Ruth Hampton. In 1998, the Lord said, I'm going to pour my joy on you. And it's going to set many people free. And I watched it. I'm not afraid. So I went to his wife. I said, you remember that word? I had it written down word for word off the table. She said, I just told my husband that two weeks ago. Well, I watched him that morning. If he's watching me, I'm in trouble. <laughs> he's up, and the music has hit its place. Man, we struck the gold of heaven, and he's going like this. He's wanting to do something, but he can't get, you know what I'm saying? The car has started. I wouldn't want to be in that race unless I knew how to drive. You know what I'm saying? If you were a race car driver. But he kept, like, he was ready to go. Yes. And I missed it. I should have ran over and grabbed his hand and said, let's dance. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> you don't be afraid when the spirit of the Lord is moving. Amen, amen. But we got to answer to God. We're going to quench the spirit or breathe the spirit. you got to know how easily it happens. Just don't do what he wants you to do when he wants you to do it. Remember that song? It was a, it was a famous song. You might remember, but I'm, and you might remember because we're all old enough. Everybody's doing it, doing it, doing it. That was a song. Everybody's doing it now. Do you remember that song? It was way back in the 40s. <laughs> Listen, I heard that. I heard that in the church one day. I said, what are they doing, Lord? What are you telling me? What are they doing? Everybody's doing it, doing it, doing it. And then I heard the song one day, Anything Goes. I'm like, oh. Did you hear what I just said? I heard the song, Anything Goes. That's all I know of the song. Anything, right or wrong, anything goes. God was telling me about the church. Yeah. Anything goes. Not good. Yeah. This is just last year. Wow, yeah. He said, Sister Carniel, I'm preaching to you. I'm telling you, you don't need seven sermons. I'm not saying it's for you, but I'm just telling you. I've been home and cried many a tear. Because mm -hmm. I'm, I'm waiting for the river to flow. Yeah. We got great musicians and great singers. Yeah, yeah. But where is the song of war? Yeah. Where is the sound of heaven? We know when it thunders and lightnings. Always happen here, though, you know, as you stares up the dust. We have been separated from the rest of the United States. There's bad weather everywhere but right here in Arizona because there's prayer meetings everywhere. People are praying. They're crying out to God. I get up in the morning. I told you I pray over my house. Lord, you make this work. Make this happen. 
I just tell the Lord what I need. Lord, I need this fixed. And then I wait on him. I wait. I don't try to rush it and get the wrong person. I wait on the Lord. I'm not saying I've done it well, but I wait. And my sister came to see me. She said, doesn't that bother you? I said, no. I'll tell you what bothers me. I said, it bothers me that we're not being bothered by the Lord. Bothered by the Lord. That means we're not sleeping very much. Can anybody say amen? We're not sleeping very much. Hallelujah. Oh, Kadamanda. Oh, Mandaya Rabanda. Now, listen, we need to pray. I told that statesman, I told her husband, rather, I said, it depends on what the truck does what the Lord wants. I mean, they've done everything but kill him. He's the battery bunny. I kept laughing at the battery bunny, and I didn't understand. I laughed on the stone on the pole, and people were looking at me. Yeah. I said, Lord, what I'm laughing, and I heard it, Donald Trump. Yeah. <laughs> Remember the battery bunny? He just keep beating the drum. Yeah. He's got on sunglasses, but there's something about it that's prophetic. <laughs> and God may have put it on there just for me. Hallelujah. That I can have a laugh. God wants you to laugh at the devil and all that he's doing. Yeah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Yeah. Look at Sister Ramona here. I'm going to tell a story about you. I was going to send you a text, but I'm not. The Lord has had you to escort many women to many traumas. Victoria's husband. Linda's husband. Another Linda's husband. It's been about six women. Kathy's husband. Yeah. It was about six of them. Death has no sting. Amen. Grave has no victory. That means when it has no sting. Amen. Everybody get this. Amen. It means that person does not has not left a bad testimony. That's right. They've right. gone on for their reward. <laughs> I saw that over Johnny McLean's funeral when I went few weeks back, I saw his life had been like a pot, a silver pot. It was that big, that high. And on top of it was all these books, and they were closed. And I thought, he's poured out and poured out and poured out, and now the books are closed. And then the preacher said that later while he was preaching. I saw it just, just before it happened. Yes. You know, I go to yes. funerals. I don't want to know if people are saved. I don't care what they've done. I want to know if they're saved. Yes. Yes. I ask people, somebody passed. Are they saved? Were they saved? Yes. Did they have a testimony? Did they say anything about Jesus? Yeah. The worth of a soul. Hallelujah. Yeah. Amen. Say, boy, you beat me up this morning. Well, that's how they make gold. They beat it and beat it and beat it and beat it. Hallelujah. I've been in a gold mines in South Africa and I've watched it made. But the weight of it, I held one little brick. They told me it was worth $300,000, so I've held that much. That thing was the ugliest thing I've ever seen. It had big knobs and blisters all over it. But it was valuable. Yes. Hallelujah. Balls that I bear. I bear. I bear. I bear. I bear. I bear. My body, the marks. The marks. Come on. You know what that means? You're marked yes. for God. He's looking to see if the cross is on us. Jesus. Wonderful counselor. Wonderful counselor. You know, I don't have a big jet to fly in, but he might translate me. Transport me. Woo! I'll get there before the plane gets there. We saw Brother Hathaway in another country. People who came back, I went to Turkey, and they said, we've seen you before. And I had a horrible time getting there, but they told me when I got there, we've seen you before. And then I had a dream that I was in a vehicle, and I was riding up and down the streets in Turkey. <laughs> this is before. It's as modern as it is now. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Hallelujah. God Hallelujah. squeezed me into the government, mm -hmm. into the yeah. Catholic Church. Into a Jewish school. 
was able to get the Jews out in 1976. Now, how many know Chris Reed? How many are watching him? He had a dream recently about this election. And he said God showed him the newspapers of 1968 where it took place in Chicago. Remember? Martin Luther King and Kennedy were both shot. He said God just brought it toward before him. He said, I'm running it by the church for you to interpret what God is saying. He said he saw the headlines and he saw it was in Chicago. Well, let's go be in Chicago again, this election. And he said he doesn't know if something is going to happen or if there's going to be an attack or maybe somebody's going to try to assassinate. Well, I don't know what else they can do with President Trump, unless, but his name is John. They might boil him in oil, huh? Yeah. <laughs> his middle name is John. Just your name will get you in trouble. Listen to it. As all he said, he repeated it word for word. You can read his words because they have them all printed out. And uh, I'm trying to remember what the headline was, but it caught my attention when I was looking at it. I tried to hear what certain people are saying because I'm hearing from the Lord too. Yeah. And I want to know if we're hearing the same thing. Okay. He's going to speak to the church things that are necessary. So we'll be strong and will be ready and be available, okay? How many want God to do that? You want him to tell you some things. But he'll only, he'll only tell you what's necessary. Doesn't fit into his plan. It's, it's not a part of who you are. They said there are going to be earthquakes look, look up in Iceland. I mean, the this, this capital city's on fire. I guess that will fall things out. Iceland. Lord, I pray that you'll give us a spirit of understanding, a spirit of learning and a spirit of understanding the times and the day we're living in. Lord, that we'll have our house in order. You've told us if we, you're speaking to the Jews in Matthew 24, if you're on the house top or on the Sabbath day, you got to know who God is speaking to in certain places in the Bible. Hallelujah. Or you're with child at that time. It will be difficult. But God is telling us to prepare ourselves. Make ourselves ready. Don't put an importance on things that are not necessary. And we don't really need it in our... In, in other words, here's what I'm saying. Don't go mountain climbing. You don't have anything else to do. Pray. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Pray. God's looking for people to go pray. Yeah. They'll call unto him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Whoa, stir up the Holy Ghost inside of you. Yeah. It's a Holy Ghost. It's a gift. Not the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost. But the Holy Spirit operates. There's hidden manner inside of you of what God wants to do. But let the deep call unto the deep. Usually it'll come with a lot of tears. Glory to God. God's going to arrest our children. They're not going to respond with any grief. They're going to agree with you for a change. Hallelujah. You're right. You're absolutely right, Mother. Come on. You've been praying. You've been on the right side. you got the right answer. You're believing. How many have children are not saved? I mean, maybe they're half in and half out. My daughter-in-law told me, I'm not sure, listen, I'm an open book. I have a granddaughter who's been a missionary. And all of a sudden, she yielded somewhere to the enemy. And her mother told me, I said, I said, what's happened to her? She came out here, what's happened? It cost me a lot of money to get out here, several thousand dollars. I mean, that's a lot when you live by faith. She said, Sister Ruth, Sister Cardio, she calls me. She said, a few years ago, I was in my living room. And all of a sudden, she said, I started weeping till I thought somebody was dying. She said, just I laid in the floor in intercession. 
And the Lord spoke to me. And he said, Margaret, you got to give Christina to me. Wow. Oh, yeah. You got to give it all to the Lord because he knows what to do and how to do it and when to do it. Right. And don't try to stop it. That's right. He's going to operate without anesthetic. Going to get to the roots. Come on. I mean, you know what I'm talking about. I'm telling you, I've been weeping. I've got some reports from my family. And I thought, oh, God, I didn't know you were going to work like that. Yeah. Got to know the worth of a soul. The worth of a soul. Yeah. That means you'll, you'll reach out there. Honey, you're the lifeline. You're the bait God is using. Glory to God. Glory to God. Now I have some flyers on the back table. Can I just use your card there a minute? They had to, they had a place reserved in Scottsdale, and I thought Scottsdale's not ready for a revival. I'm being honest with you. And sure enough, they canceled their contract with him. Yeah. Yeah. Printed thousands of these. It cost some money to print all this. Yeah. So they're going to a new place, moved to a larger venue. He said, it's at the fairgrounds, I guess. Yes. It's the 21st through the 24th. If you can make your way there at 6.30, the address, everything's on the card on McDowell Road, Arizona State Fair. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Get out there and be a cheerleader. Hallelujah. Take some with you if you can and distribute them. I'm not saying that other people are not the real deal, but there's an anointing on this man to save souls. Yeah. Yeah. He that saves souls is wise. Yeah. Yeah. So, I went to hear him. Here's what he said to me. I don't even know how I got to meet him. It just happened. I didn't feel too good before I knew it. I'm in front of him. Somebody said, come with me, and I thought we were going. I don't know where we were going. Now, all of a sudden, I'm in right in front of him. These are his first words he said to me. He just looked at me. He said, you got a lot of stories to tell. <laughs> I said, I sure do. I wrote a book on it. He said, bring me one. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to worry how it's going to be done. God does it. Come on, I'm telling you. You don't have to chase after man. Chase after God. Yeah. Just chase after God. He knows where man is, but he right. wants to know where we are. Come on, where are we? Where are we? Who are we? Who are you? I'd ask, I'm a citizen of heaven. Don't I look like it? Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. I found the way. Amen. That's another song. I got lots of songs. I have found the way. I, Jesus is the way. Yeah. You think these old Pentecostal songs? Let me tell you something, honey. They brought the rain from heaven. They brought the shaft on the floor. They brought the wheat into the kingdom. You read the stories of how the Evans boy was 17 years old and he hardly ever saw a bed. He was praying or working night and day. You can. You can live in that place where your spirit is awake. And the Bible says, awaken, awaken. Put on the garments. Put on your beautiful garments. Glory to God. Lord, I pray for living waters. Yeah. And a quickening in these mortal bodies. A quickening. Yeah. Yeah. A quickening, Lord. And restoration in our lives. There was one given to, once given to the saints. Yeah. I thank you, Lord, that we're going to have a new view of who we are. Thank you, Jesus. A people that know their God. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. That's right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to have favor everywhere they go. Yes. Arizona is the last state to come into the Union, into the United States, not into the whole Union. But she's going to be first. Yeah. That's right. Hallelujah. you got to know this. If God's going to be in something, you're going to be a part of it. Yeah. Yeah. Now, he doesn't have to include you. He doesn't have to do anything. Right. But because he's good yeah. and because you're his child yeah. and he loves you. 
Whatever one thing or two things you ask of him, he's going to give it to you. And he's going to do it. And you might not get it right away, but all of a sudden he, he waits to surprise you. So your thanksgiving will be greater than what you thought. Hallelujah. I mean, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He did it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. He did it. Come on, see a vision of what he's going to do. Get a vision of what he's going to do. Get a vision of how much he loves you. Come on, God so loved that he gave. You've got to get this. God would not have given his son if he didn't know it was going to save the whole world. you got to think about this. And he knows what he's doing as he's preparing you. He knows who's going to be a plowman. Who's going to be the sickle. Who's going to be the voice. Who's going to be available. Just be ready at all times. I had to learn this. I was a person that took two hours to get dressed. Boy, I tell you, I can get dressed in 10 minutes. I got the perfect hairstyle. The perfect dress. Shoes, you just slip your feet into them. Come on. Yeah. Put a band on your hair, put on sunglasses, and nobody will know you. Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, but the Lord has been there. Come on. Come on. I'm just telling you. Used to be that pride. It had to be a certain way. Well, he's going to remove that and show the gold. Come on. The gold is coming. The gold is coming. All the fires you've been through, the gold is coming. The value of who you are. The worth of who you are. It's coming. It's coming. Come on, you got to look at yourself. It's coming. It's coming. Look what happened to Samson. He was flirting around with everything and doing everything he shouldn't have done. But in the end, he pulled the columns down. In the end, come on, in the end, God gave him back his strength. And God's about ready to strengthen the church in a way that you have never seen. Are you listening to me? Some of you are going to do things that you hadn't thought about and entered your mind of what God's come to do. Stop looking at yourself and where you came from and who you are and your education and what you've got. Listen, look at what's inside. Glory to God, look inside. And these earthen vessels, read it in Jeremiah. Look what he's put inside of these earthen vessels. Yes. Hallelujah, he told Kent Christmas. Everybody knows Kent Christmas? Yeah. He said it so I can say it. It was on the air. This is when he was young and he was running around with a lot of preppy people in the church and he said after the services, They'd go out to eat, and he saw the song leader up at the bar drinking beer. And some of the others were drinking, too. Then they went to a movie. I want everyone of you to listen. Went to a movie after the service. You better listen. I'm serious. He said, the Holy Ghost spoke to him and said, why have you brought me into this place? Yeah. If you're going to preach, preach. If you're not, go on and do your own thing. But don't bring me into this movie house again. Wow. Okay. The very atmosphere. Yeah. All the advertisements, the cursing and the terrorism and the confusion. You know what I'm saying? God, God doesn't want us listening and going into those places. My father would never <laughs> take us into a place that served beer when we went out to eat when we were young. Mm -hmm. We wouldn't go into a restaurant and serve beer. We didn't even have a container in our house that had a cigarette advertisement on it. You know, like a box. They used to advertise cigarettes. Wouldn't come in our house. Mm -hmm. My father wouldn't even take a newspaper. We heard from God. Come on, we heard from God. It's not going to be in the newspaper anyway. Come on. It's going to be in your heart. It's going to be in the spirit. Yeah. The spirit. The spirit knows everything. David's wife. Listen. It comes home. It'll be in your house. If you get real spiritual, I'm telling you, your family is going to let you, will put you on notice. You haven't been there yet. It's going to come down to that. I'm not saying I want it, but Sister White went, our friend, she's eight years old, and they would ask her to pray over the food because somebody else went to church. She was going to Sunday school. God honored her. She said, they made fun of her, and she runs to her room, and she said, they don't like me. And her, then her father left, because he was an alcoholic. He left the family. She said, I don't have a father, and the Lord spoke to her. Everybody listened on the airways. 
Don't say your father doesn't love you or aunt told you love you. Here's what the Lord said to her. Never say you don't have a father. I'm your father, and I love you, and I will take care of you. That's what he said to her. She went down and saw the baby Jesus in the manger, and she heard the preacher said something about you got to eat Christ. So she picked the baby up and plucked it in her mouth. <laughs> she tells this story. Isn't she like that? Full of wisdom. You're glad when she goes home. <laughs> and here's what I'm saying to you. All the time she's talking to you, her words are examining you. She doesn't do it on purpose. Isn't that right? She just has that discernment. She's talking to you about what's going on. Yeah. Because one day the Lord said, Will you give me your joy for waters to swim in? She said, Lord, you can have anything. So he took her husband. He asked her a second time. Now, none of you, this, I'm not putting this on you, but you got to love God so much that they're saved, you're going to see them later. The second time he asked her that, in another way, her four daughters, 13 through 18, went home to live with grandmother and never came back. Wow. Now she's in a training ministry. The third time he said that to her, she had an inheritance from her grandfather's ice cream factory and he took her name off the list. She didn't get anything. Wow. The fourth time he asked her that, she had plans, her first husband's gone now. Because the Lord said to her when she wanted to get married again, here's what he said, have not been better to you than six husbands. You don't want the Lord to have to say that, but you can get in a place and he'll talk to you. The man that she thought she might marry died. And you know what she said? When they told her her husband was dead, the policeman would come to the door, knock on the door. We found your husband in a hotel room. He had a heart attack. He was a lawyer. Her four daughters are hearing it. They're weeping. She stretched herself on the floor across the doorstep on her belly. The Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. Wow. That was her words to the Lord. Now, I'm not saying, I don't know where I'm going to God tells me some things. But you can get to the place that you're not of this earth. You understand? When they told Jesus that John had been beheaded, the Bible didn't say he cried and said, now, boys, you're going to be all right. It said he went on to the next city. He had business to do. He knew it was all part of what was going to take place. Now, I know it says to mourn with those that mourn. I can't. It's something I, I never cried over my mother and father, not one tear, because I gave him the roses while I lived. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. You can be in a place with God. We should sing that song. It don't hurt anymore. All my teardrops are gone. I'm just telling you. You're, you've been you've been raised to another place yeah. where you're yeah. reigning yeah. with God. Yeah. You're ruling with God. You can't rule with God unless we can overcome the things of this life. I, listen, I miss my children when they're not around. But you know what? I've come to a place I don't miss them anymore. There's nothing wrong with me. I got all of you to think about, all of you to talk about, all the telephone calls and the texts and da 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 <laughs> Who has time to worry about what was yesterday? Yeah. This is the day. Yeah. This is the day the Lord has made. Oh, yeah. What is he saying in this room? Come on. Some of you should be prophesying. Mm -hmm. yeah. Don't, I'm not mad at you. I'm just telling you. Mm -hmm. Just prophesy. Yeah. This is what the Lord is saying. I bought you with a price, and I love you, and you're not your own. You belong to me. Right. J-O-Y means Jesus owns you. Amen. Overwhelms you. Jesus, others, and you. Thank you Jesus. I don't know the last time I saw the devil. He's still running. Hallelujah. <laughs> He's still running. I get up in the morning and light a fire just to let him know. Oh, one day he's going to be in it. Hallelujah. Come on. And get yourself up with God and full of his presence and his wonder and his grace. I'm still working on that one. Oh, Jesus. I just had a vision. Oh, my goodness. I just had a vision. Right here on the back. 
I just saw this. I'm just, you want me to tell you privately or tell you openly? It's not bad. I just saw the Lord with a lighter in his hand and he flicked it. Now maybe he's going to light your candle, but I saw it. I just saw it. The candle, the spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. It says searching all the inward places. And he wants us to burn for him. Burn for him. You don't know what I mean by burn. That means you're going to be slapped on one. You're not going to have time to feel sorry for yourself. I've been through that. And he told me one day, he says, your tears don't move me. That's what he said to me. Your tears don't move me. Because he made us to be people of his everlasting purposes. He said, what are you saying? Well, I'm out here and I don't have any family out here. I might get a call once in a blue moon. For six years, I cried out to God. I said, I just don't understand it, Lord. My son hasn't called me. And I'm, I'm really upset because at least he could call me. He doesn't have to send me anything, not even a Christmas card. But at least he could call me. And I said, I just don't understand. What have I done to him? I've raised him well. I took good care of him. And I'm reminding the Lord of how helpless he was when he was in diapers and how I took good care of him. <laughs> he calls me and leaves me a voice message yeah. on Mother's Day. Just wanted to wish you a happy Mother's Day. But the Lord let me hear from you. You understand? I complained to the Lord till he heard me. Yeah. That was one time in six years I heard from him. Lord, I hope he doesn't show up. <laughs> but he called me just wanted to wish you a happy mother's day so I called him back and he didn't answer the phone I just told him I didn't get upset I said well I heard from the Lord but I got 50 other texts I had 37 phone calls the other day on my phone 37 How am I going to answer all these calls? And then the political arena is on there. Vote for this and do this and do that. The devil will try to wear you out. Yeah. Amen. Yep. So dig your heels in. Lift your hands up and let your voice be heard on high. Amen. Woo! That was the time for you to say, Jesus. Jesus! 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 Wonderful counselor! Boy, there's a stairway music. Get on those steps. Now listen, they had all these um, big guns to come in to see Biden yesterday. It was on my phone, and I thought, do I have to look at this? Yeah, really. So we're going to pray a little prayer right now. Yes. We're going to be in agreement. We're all agree with me? Yes. Okay. Yes. 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 Now I'm not mad at Clinton or Obama or Biden. I'm not mad. Everybody's going to have their day in court. Yes. Yeah. Now Lord, we thank you. <laughs> they could call in all the armies of the earth. But you're one. And you're the Lord of hosts. And the captain of it all. And Lord, if, if there's any plans they're making that's not of you, I thank you that you're going to put your finger in the middle of it. Amen. And you're going to expose. You told me the other day there's going to be exposure. You spoke that to me. Lord, help us to keep everything in order. Your order. <clears throat> and let gladness be in our heart at all times. That we can truly... Love one another, even as you Amen. have said, by our love we shall know what we do for one another, yeah. how we help one another. Yeah. Lord, how we extend ourselves to make things work that are necessary. Yeah. But Lord, I pray, and I believe that we're in the last of the last of the last days. And you told me one time when this brother was going to go home that he was going home in a few days and he went home in nine days. That was a few days to you. 
Sometimes you say in a little while. Or soon. But we know, Lord, that you're working all things out yes. for your glory and your namesake. Yes, Jesus. And you know what goes on behind closed doors? You hear everything. Yes. You see man in his smallness. But we know you in your mightiness, Lord, only in a measure. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And we thank you, Lord, for the safety of your people, the awareness, the discernment. Lord, let us even let us know this, even when we think on these things that you're speaking to us. Amen. You put it in our hearts and our mind. We had an awareness of it. <laughs> that we wouldn't be in the dark. We're not children of the dark, but children of the light. Yes. And we thank you, Lord, for working mm -hmm. that we might have time to bring in the harvest. Lord, if we'll do it with such an ease that we'll be amazed of the grace of God that's upon our lives. Amen. I thank you, Lord, that nothing is absolutely too hard for you. Nothing is too difficult. You span the heavens with your hands. Oh, Lord, what's going to happen when you put two hands together? <laughs> Woo! You said our ways are not yours, but God, I thank you. You've given us your mind. And we will know your will and your purposes. I thank you, Lord, that we're going to cry out. That our mind and our heart and our spirit is going to be ever towards you. Yes. Yes. Your plans, not what we want. They'll bring ease and pleasure unto us. But what will bring glory to your name. You said the whole earth is going to be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord. The knowledge of who you are and what you're doing. Thank you, Lord, for our times. You said our times are in your hands. Thank you, Lord, for our days that are in the earth. That we will prosper and occupy. And fulfill the heavenly calling. Thank you for prayer warriors. You said you would leave them in the earth if they were old, if they would pray. If we would just pray. And we give praise to you for our times. Yes. For our strength. For our health. For meeting our needs, Lord. And the extra that you give us. Put an awareness in our spirit that we have not had before. Awareness of the times of the spirit. Of the atmospheres that you've given us, of the anointings that we will not let it fall to the ground. Yeah. In Jesus' name, I thank you for it. Amen. I thank you, Lord, that we will occupy. Occupy. Lord, we will not be lazy or laid back or spending our time twiddling our fingers. But we will occupy every moment that you give us that the kingdom of God shall not suffer loss. We give you praise, Lord, in Jesus' name. We glorify your wonderful name. Yeah. Jesus, thank you for that name. We're married to it. My husband, hallelujah. hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord, you put a ring on our finger of authority. It says that you are Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you. It's been signed and sealed by your name. We give you praise, even as Hezekiah turned his face to the wall. Lord, and you said he was going to go, and you gave him 15 years because he turned to you. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, Lord, gracious, you promised 80 years of our reason of good health. And we see those that are living longer because of their testimony towards you. We worship you today. Yes. We magnify you. King of kings and Lord of lords. Host of heaven and ruler of the earth. Thank you, Lord, for getting into man's affairs that are evil. Lord, they're evil men that are trying to run this world. Their mouth is not clean. Inside their dead men's bones. I see that, and others have told me they've seen that. Nothing there but bones 
and a skeleton. They're not like Elisha where there was fire in their bones or Jeremiah. Fire in their bones, Lord. They kept throwing him down in the well, in the dirt, in the prison. But his testimony never changed. Thank you, Lord, for that eternal salvation. That goodness, that eternal life. Glory to your name. I just, I just see the Lord with a great big bottle of perfume. I've never seen a bottle. Now, down in Egypt, when we used to go, they have unusual thin glass bottles. They're so thin, you wonder if they wouldn't break. But they're different. The glass, it's hand-blown. Mm -hmm. And I saw the Lord open this great fragrance. Come on, just smell the fragrance of the Lord. His presence is so holy. You know, have you ever smelled holiness? I read a scripture this morning where it says, Seek my face continually. Yes. Seek the Lord and his strength. Yes. Verse 11 of chapter 16 of 1 Chronicles. Yes. Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his face continually. Remember his marvelous works that he had done, his wonders and the judgments of his mouth. He is the Lord, our God. His judgments are all in the earth. Be ye mindful always of his covenant, the work which he commanded to a thousands generations, even of the covenant which he made with Abraham and his oath unto Isaac. Glory ye in his holy name. Let the heart of them rejoice that seek the Lord. Sing unto him. Sing psalms unto him. Yeah. Talk ye of all his wondrous works. This is the day that David delivered his first psalm to thank the Lord. Sing unto the Lord all the earth. Show forth. He said all the earth. Show forth from day to day his salvation. Declare his glory among the heathen, his marvelous works amongst the nation, all nation. For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. He also is to be feared above all gods. Fear before him all the earth. The world also shall be stable, that it will not be moved. Hallelujah. Lord, I thank you. One day you showed me somebody in a straitjacket because they got out of line. They were being too nosy. And they kept questioning the wrong person and the person had a vision of them in a straitjacket. And the person told them. They kept questioning the person and they didn't want to tell the answers because they didn't want to talk about it. So finally they said to the person, I see somebody in a straitjacket. And they didn't ask any more questions. You will have to use your gift sometimes, I'm telling you. Maybe some of you haven't been bothered that much. Know that the Lord is our God. There's none like him. Let the sea roar. Let the fields rejoice. And all that's in it. Then shall the trees of the woods sing out the presence of the Lord. Because he's coming to judge the earth. And I thank you, Lord. You're going to make us so transparent in everything. Come on, in everything. Yeah. Transparent. Yeah. We're going to be read by all men as the epistles of the Word of God. Yeah. Hallelujah. That nothing is too hard. Nothing is difficult. And nothing will He withhold from them that walk uprightly before them. Deliver us from the heathen, that we may give thanks to your holy name and glory in thy praise. You'll notice all the time on television, they'll say, we're praying for you. They were really praying. I, many people got together and prayed over this accident. I've heard it three times where they prayed with the people three times because they'd lost their family. They said, we prayed with them. We cried with them. We need to know how to pray. But they never say Jesus. They say God. 
You got to bring the authority into the prayer. In Jesus' wonderful name. In the glorious name of Jesus. He said, all power has been given unto me. He said that all power in heaven and earth has been given to me. And whatever you do, in word or deed, do it in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Glory to the name. Glory to the King. Glory to the Lord of Lords. Glory to all that He does. All of us, Sheila Bakoya Lavandai. All of us, Siva Bakora Bandai. All of us, Sheila Bakora Bandai. Only what's done for Him is going to last. Gather all that you can gather. Gather all the flowers you can gather. Let the works of God be in your yes. life. Let it be a testimony. Yes. That you know, that yes. you know, that you know. Hallelujah. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Praise your name. Glory we to have God. a couple here that preach Sunday. i got to tell you this. I just told Dolly all these things I needed prayer for. This really happened. When I tell you it happened, I'm telling you the truth. The Lord taught me. He said to me one day, I don't want you to embellish when you give anybody a prophetic word. Don't you know what I mean by that? Don't add to it. Add to it. Don't let it look like jewelry coming to people. Yeah. Tell them what the Lord is saying. Yeah. I told my friend, I said, I'm going back to church. They damn, damn they were two preachers, husband and wife. She whipped out that prophetic word Sunday and went through that crowd like a whirlwind. Here in this church. Oh, yeah. I'm coming back tonight. And I somebody saved me a seat close by. And before she preached, she said, I got some words of healing. And it was everything I had told my friend. She looked at me, she said, All those words are for you. <laughs> the first thing she talked about was my bulging. What do you call it? Bulging? Yes, yes. Disc. And I told her how it had affected certain parts of my body and because of what I was taking. Listen to this. I said, it's affected my hair. I said, my scalp bothers me so bad. She called the words out. She said, it's something about the hair. I don't know what it is. And your scalp. She said it three times. It's something in your scalp. I remember that. Yep. Were you there? Oh, yeah. then, then she said, and I told her how it was this medicine I was taking what it had done to my mouth and how it got in my teeth and around my lips. She said the same thing. She gave six words and it was all for me. I'm going to give an overhaul tonight. Hallelujah. Not a U-Haul, an overhaul. I'm not going to U-Haul it around anymore. Come on. And I wanted to run through a trip and leap over a wall. I should have ran up there. We need somebody to run. Hallelujah. Get some fire on you and you'll run. Hallelujah. I said, it's me. She said to me, that's everything you just told me. I'm going to keep my hair. Hallelujah. Don't get upset with me. You don't know how I prayed over my head. I lost all my hair from malaria. It came out by the handfuls. Okay, when I put the brush in it, I mean the brush in it. I was almost bald right here. I said, oh, Jesus, I know you love me. Oh, but I want to show you how much I love you. Please don't take my hair away. And I prayed and I prayed and I prayed and I prayed. I was in a coma seven days both times with malaria. It came back. Amen. Come on. God can make it come back. Yeah. Yeah. He, yeah. Could, he put teeth in your mouth. He put teeth into my friend's mouth. Yeah. They said they felt heat coming up their arm. And they went and looked in a mirror and had a great big gold tooth right in the back. Yeah. We got it recorded. Come on. Get your faith working. We're people that know our God. Do you know your God? Come on, do you know your God? Do you know he's your friend? He's your husband. Hallelujah. Do you know he'll supply whatever you need? Not everything we want right at first. And he doesn't walk around giving people things just to give them things. God is not a waster. He gives us things to help other people. You got that? I hear people say, oh, God just want me to have. No, he didn't. He did not. He doesn't waste. 
He tells us that we're a servant of our money. We're a servant of our time. Are you listening? We're a servant of everything. God has a perfect world. Hallelujah. Get to know him. How he likes. What he likes. Amen. Isn't it wonderful? I remember I had this ring. I hate to tell you about all the good things because he gives me everything. He gives me love. He gives me something to say. He gives me a shout. When I can't really dance, I put my I sit in the chair and put my feet in the air and kick them just to let them know I'm still there. Come on. You gotta be real with him. I had this real pretty ring and and I saw somebody else's face in it. This has happened to me twice. Oh, Lord. Jesus. I don't ask him if he's telling me to do it. I just say, hoping he'll give a little mercy, but he doesn't. <laughs> yeah. And I said this to the Lord. I just, all of a sudden, I felt to do it in a moment. I said, I'm going to give this ring to this person. And this is what I said to the Lord. Now, you have to get to a place where you can say certain things to the Lord. You, you can't be cheeky talking to God. And I said, you know, I gave all my pearl rings away, too. I said, I know you know it. I gave them all away. And I said, he said, I'll answer you before you call. Mm -hmm. I said, That's right. um, I would, I, I, a pearl ring won't do it. That's what I said. A pearl ring won't do it. It came in the mail that day. <laughs> Four pearls in the ring, but it was a lot of gold in it. I've never seen so much gold. I thought, now he's going to want this one too. <laughs> he just wants it. Listen, he wants you to enjoy it a while. Yeah. And then he brings another chariot coming by. Come on, I'm to tell you something. Another chariot. I don't care how hard the journey is. There's a chariot that wants to move in the heavens. Come on, God wants us to have. He wants us to have revelations that will almost arrest the church when we tell them, would God do that? Oh, don't say what he won't do. Never tell him what he won't do because he'll do it. He'll do it. But he sets you up to say these things so he can show his greatness. Are you understand what I'm saying? He'll set us up and you think, oh, where'd that come from? That's crazy. No, no Christian talks like that. Oh, no, he's got things hidden that are deep and great and big. To show his power, people that do, do not worship him in the manner of power that he's in. It came with four pearls. I thought, oh, there's the four living creatures. <laughs> Each one that was bigger than the other was the same, but it had great big gold leaves, and it went on my finger. Oh, no. And a note came with it. I was thinking about you, and I think you like pearls. Somebody gave me this ring in 1998, and I'm going to pass it on to you. Amen. I knew it was her treasure. You know what I'm saying? Now listen, God wants, he's the treasure chest. Yes. He wants the treasure. Yeah. Don't anybody bring me any rings, please. Don't put anything in my offering. <laughs> and don't, I can't eat chocolate, so please don't put chocolate in my offering. Yeah. <coughs> <coughs> You don't know what God's going to test you on. Amen. And you don't want him to talk to you about it either, I'll tell you that. We're being examined right now for his power that's going to pour out. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. But the reason why God doesn't do more it's because they're, they're pearls and he doesn't want them to fall to the ground. I've come home from these meetings and the earlier years, you know, I've been having these prayer meetings for 22 years. And all Michelle and I could talk about, did you hear that word? Did you hear the sound of it? What do you think God was doing? And we get into the mysteries of the word that was given, what he sang. His words are eternal. They're like facets in the bridal gown. They're jewels. They're treasures. I saw them going to the air like this. I thought, what is that going to the air? 
and they looked like settings that you put stones in, and they were landing in the breastplates of people's shirts, men's shirts and ladies' gowns, rubies and emeralds and sapphires. It's part of the adornment of the bride of Christ. And listen to this. So we go to this meeting. Of all people, this brother, she's there. He walks over to me. I thought, where'd he come from? He just walks right to me. He's written this book. It took him 33 years to write it. Yeah. It's all about the stones that are in the wall and in the foundation. He said, I want to give you this book because I think it's pertaining to you. I thought, I was just talking to the Lord. I have a great big encyclopedia, World Atlas of all the stones and where they're found. And I'm trying to get the origin of what they're saying. This book is all about his findings on the stones. Then he said to me, listen to this. Then he can tell you by the stones of what your birth numbers mean. He said, what's your birth numbers? 318, 38. So when he got to the eight, here's what he said. Shall I tell him? Yeah. Yes. He said, eight means glory. Your life is destined for glory. That's what he said to me. I said, brother, God wants us hidden in glory. Hid in him. He wants to know when COVID came, it was the testing ground for everybody in the whole world. He said to me, do you promise? Here's what he said. Are you on my side? When he woke me up, he said, are you on my side? Do you promise to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing about the truth? And he spoke the same thing to Bobby Connors. And Bobby Connors said he saw the whole world and the church, it was the United States mainly, and the church and the individuals and the courts on 2019. That's where it started. We were in court to see who was on the Lord's side. And you found out who was on the Lord's side. I'm sorry to say this. They shut churches down everywhere. Yeah. How many of you are here? We didn't shut this <laughs> down. I went everywhere asking somebody to give me a room. Because you're going to hold court with God. You don't stop. Amen. Find a closet. Amen. Get in your car. Go down to the basement. Do something. Yeah. And they say, oh, they're a heretic. They're a little wild. Well, he said it's going to be like a calf let out of the stall. You ever see what they do? They take, they cut the ropes off their feet and let them go. Man, their feet are kicking up in the air like a donkey. And they're frolicking all over the place because they got freedom. Yes. Yeah. Freedom. Freedom. Amen. Freedom. Turn the radio on. Hallelujah. Yeah. We should sing that song and listen to the music in the air. Turn the radio on. Turn it on. Turn it on. Come on, get some words of knowledge. Everybody, right now, get some words of knowledge from one another. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. This whole time I have been sitting there and I keep hearing the Lord, what the Lord is saying. Man knoweth not where the wind come from. But my people, I see my people like palm trees bending with the wind when it blows. Be careful, be careful against the pricks. Be careful, just flow. Flow in the spirit, open your hearts and flow. Flow like the wind, the wind flies high, the wind flies high. Just flow, be careful of the pricks. Jesus name, kicking against the pricks. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. Cause me to flow. Dear Lord, like a mighty river, cause me to flow. Dear Lord, like a mighty sea, cause me to flow. Dear Lord, like a mighty river, cause me to flow. Dear Lord, like a mighty sea, for the corn, the wine, let them flow together. The corn, the wine, and the oil flowing together. That's revival. That's the word. 
And that's the joy. It's, it's mixed with the anointing. The corn, wine, and the oil are three symbols of revival. Of revival. Now, what I'm saying to you in this word, so always to the heavens, tell the Lord about it. I don't care what it is, you can tell me anything. You can talk, you can be upset and talk to the Lord because He understands you. But at least you're not telling other people, you're telling Him. You understand? Tell Him and ask Him what does He think and what does He want to do about it. And tell Him, Lord, you want to do something about this? I'm with you. I'm working with you, Lord. I'm working with you. Just don't kill them. Hallelujah. But get their hearts ready. Get their spirits ready. Ready, Freddie. Hallelujah. Ready. Ready. I went to a Pentecostal church and they never used the word Freddie. This was recently. Oh, no, that was a, not the right word to use in that Pentecostal church. And they heard it, Ready, Freddie. And they got up and started singing, Ready, Freddie. It was the key to the whole service. Ready, Freddie. Come on. Ready, Freddie. You know anybody named Fred? Ready, Freddie. Come on. Hallelujah. Starts with F. Fire. Hallelujah. Fire. 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 Freddy. FR. Righteousness. Everlasting. How do you spell Freddy? FR. F R E D. F -R -E -D. Deliverance. That's Fred. A is for always. N is for now. I'm spelling Freddy. F R E D D Y. I'll get it. And you'll be saying why, too. Why? <laughs> Come on. Come on, God wants you to let go. Let loose. Yeah. Live, live, yeah. live, 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 yeah. live, 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 yeah. live, 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 yeah. live, 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 hallelujah, live, live for him. Yeah. Amen. Oh, my shut up on Oh, I just saw the lion. Woo! I just saw his claws. Hallelujah. I've never seen that before. Lavai said earlier, don't kick against the pricks. You said that to Paul. Why are you kicking against the pricks? I'm trying to do something here. He was a religious man. He was a learned man. He knew all about what the word was saying. But he didn't have any freedom in the Holy Ghost. Then he said, I come not preaching. Oh, with man's language, but with power. 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 In the Holy Ghost. In the Holy Ghost. In the Holy Ghost. That means people are getting delivered. They're getting delivered. Stop worrying about the devils. He's not in my house, I want to tell you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I got angels singing in my house. I turned around three times and saw angels. God wants you to see angels. He wants you to taste of him. When I was reading about David, it was such a wonderful, wonderful word where David in his last hours, where the Lord, he wanted to build a house for the Lord. He said, he said, I have not dwelt in a house since the day that I brought up Israel unto this day. But have gone from one tent to another, from one tabernacle to another. Yeah. Don't put God in a box. Don't say what he can't do. Hallelujah. He'll rob Peter to pay Paul if he has to. <laughs> but he'll do it. Are you hearing what I'm saying? He'll do it. Yeah. I've lived to see him pick a man's pockets one day. Because <clears throat> he didn't tell me the truth about the money he had for me. If you live honorably and tell the truth in everything, are you listening to me? <laughs> I tell you, God will cause truth to be revealed all the time. All the time. On your behalf. On your behalf. He'll cause people to lower prices because they just in your presence, if you live upright before God, He'll cause men to do the right thing. Are you listening? He'll cause them to do it. He'll take the rebellion out of them and do the right thing by you. Glory to God. Everything has been hidden is going to be revealed. Everything is going to surface in these days. But the Lord said, don't kick against the pricks of what I'm doing and how I'm doing it. Holy, 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 holy. Can you say holy, holy, holy? Holy, holy. I want to be after God's heart. Are you after his heart? I want to be after his heart. I want to hear the heartbeat. I want to feel the rhythm. And the moves of what he's doing. Yeah, 
I just don't jump in my clothes and come over here. I don't wait till the last minute to get dressed. I prepare an altar to the Lord in my house. I sit in the chair and I don't lean back in the chair and put my feet up to pray. I sit on the end of the chair. Lord, I'm going to talk to you. And I know you have something to say, but I want ears to hear it. I want you to be able to tell it to me. I want my table, my heart prepared to hear what you have to say. And the Lord is so good and so gracious. If he really told us what we were like, oh my goodness, who would stand? The scripture says that. Yeah. Who would be able to stand? But he does and he's kind and he's generous. So he pours on oil and he pours in wine. He pours in thanksgiving. And he pours in grace. And then he sends all the monkeys to your house. I'm telling you, four monkeys have been in my house messing around for the last month or so. <laughs> Breaking up things. And I just said to some, one of them, I said, you need to let your spirit get broken. Well, what do you mean? I said, let the Lord temper some things. Temper some things. Temper them. Temper them. You know what happens when you temper metal? It can stand a lot of beatings. It can stand a lot of hard things. A lot of heavy rains. A lot of storms. Yeah. Tempered. You know that horseshoe goes on that horse? It's tempered. So it can run. Yes. Won't get the pedal in its foot. How beautiful are the feet of those that bring good news. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I got prophecies. I got them written down, honey. I, you can read them if you want to. The Lord said, prepare yourself because there's a people crying out and I'm going to send you to them. You need to hear these things. They're crying out. Amen. They're crying out. Somebody's calling me. Hallelujah. I got to get ready. I got to get over there. And you think you're just a gopher. You know, a gopher in the dirt and the ground is just going here and going there and going here and going there. <laughs> but you're carrying out the Lord's bidding. You're carrying out the Lord's plan. I thought about Thanksgiving. I got saved on Thanksgiving Day. And I was going to go to Jean and Jerry, and I just I couldn't make it. I really wanted to go, and I called her. I said, I can't make it. She calls me back later. She says, listen, we have food left over. And she said, somebody's going to bring it to you. Didn't, didn't I tell you the Lord told me he would have it at hand, whatever I needed. Yeah. And here they come to my door, a great big shopping bag. Nice. They were on their way home. They just... God's about to drop by. Yeah. He's going through the earth right now, but he's going to go through the he's going to go home one day and I'm going with him. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, get excited. I see the Lord. He's measuring. Oh, how beautiful it is. I see chariots. I see chariots being measured for you to ride in the heavens. I'm seeing that. Come on. Amen. If you want to do it, you can do it. I'm telling you, you can get strange like me. You get strange like all them Pentecostal people that others are trying to figure them out. Hallelujah, you can't figure out the Spirit. Hallelujah. You can't tell God what to do. Glory to God. And He's always working. He's always doing something. He's always making adjustments. He's always making the temperature different. Hallelujah. Glory to His name. Hallelujah. Glory to His name. Just when you thought you had the order, He said, no, it's a new order coming. New order. Yes. We're not going to use this anymore. We're not, we're not going to have it in the tent. And we're not going to have it in the temple. We're going to have it in you. Come on, say it's going to be in me. It's going to be in me. It's going to be in me. Come on. It's going to be in me. Oh, the kingdom of God's going to be in me. If anybody has need of anything, I'm going to be able to help them. Look back there on that table. It's a plant back there. I want you to look at it. It's just, it's a green plant. I'm trying to remember, what, do you, what would you call that plant? It has a name. It's a pathos. What is it? A pathos. 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 Well, they were hanging in the store when I went in three times to Walmart. And I thought, do I want one or do I want, not want one? Do I want one? You did. And then every the moment came, so somebody brings me one this morning. Amen. Everything I need is going to be at hand. Just put it in my car and take it home. 
Come on, I'm trying to tell you, he wants to do it all the time. Yeah. All the time. Amen. He's got angels ready to release, to bring the miracle, to bring the answer, to bring the joy, yeah. to bring the victory. Are you listening to me? Yeah. To bring whatever you need. Listen to this. I went out to have pizza with somebody. We went to a restaurant. Well, I put on my sunglasses. I was in the car. I had them on until I got in the restaurant. Then I put my other glasses on. When I got ready to leave, I thought I had them on. And but when I got in the car and changed them to read it, something on the street sign, I couldn't find them. So we go back to the restaurant. They don't have them. What has happened to my glasses? So three weeks ago, I said, Lord, can we talk now about my glasses? I never lose anything that you don't find it for me. I like to know what happened to them. I get a telephone call from Oklahoma. You know, like yeah. Oklahoma? Yeah. <laughs> they said I was vacuuming my car and something got stuck in the hose. And she said, what is this? And it was my glasses in a case that was sitting in a hose. She sent them to me in the mail with a nice offering. Hallelujah. <laughs> Your glasses are on the way. Remember I talked to you, I said, Lord, bring back my glasses. He's concerned about every hair on your hair. I keep telling you this. Amen. Every hair. Some of your and I'm saying he's concerned about what you don't know. <clears throat> what you don't know. This new thing he's gonna do, you don't know. And I don't know. But you just got to fall in and don't break the ranks. He said, this army won't break the ranks. In other words, you know what that means? It won't offend one another. It won't hurt one another. Joel talked about this great army. There's, it's like a paradox. Is he talking about a bad army or a good army? Depends on where you fall in. But he's talking about a people that know their God. Now listen, I, I've suffered some things to know God. I'm going to tell you that. I've suffered some things. I've had a lot of wins. I'm not going to tell you about it. And I'm not going to write a book about all the dirty stuff that people make money off of, what they've been through. You're going to go through it whether you want to go through it or not. Hallelujah. Because the Bible says you got to go through the Valley of Baca. Come on. The Valley of Baca. But there's a well there. Come on. You're going to drink from the well. You're going to drink. He said, drink from this waters and you'll never thirst again. You drink from your sufferings. Come on, drink from the hardships and the heartaches. Drink from the lack. Drink from what has happened to you. Come on, you learned something. You learned that he is God. And nothing is too difficult or too hard. And every time he waves his hands, you see the reminder of that hole. Those nail prints right there that he took for us to have victory. Come on. You see in his feet, I saw the holes in his face where his hair was plucked out of his beard. It looked like somebody had a bad case of acne when I saw it. I did not see him with the beard and I didn't see him with long hair. Regardless of the pictures that people have made, I didn't see him. I remember it was hard to look on his face. The look on his face was hard to look at because it spoke of sufferings. This is what I saw. I've never seen anything like it. It looked like his face had been roasted in a fire. We don't know the pain that people have been through to be where they are and to have the victory. You understand what I'm saying? Or the, or the burden that they've borne for other people that made it possible for other people and their everlasting because they've gone out on a limb for other people to be free. They've gone beyond the arrows that David that that, that David David was told. Remember Jonathan told him he said, when you see the arrows, this will be the blueprint of how you're to go. And the message is we gotta go beyond the, mar ar ar the arrows. Mm -hmm. Go beyond the arrows, go beyond what we've done before. And God is no man's debtor. And I'm not talking about he's gonna give me something and I got this and I got that. It's to accommodate the kingdom that's in you. It's to accommodate the work of the Lord that's in you. He's going to meet every need. He's going to have everything that you need. He's going to have the people, the place, and the purpose. Hallelujah. To fit the anointing that's on your life. Amen. To fit the praise that you've given unto him. He said, I will work in your praise. Now praise me. He enhances the praises of his people. 
and there's a sound that's about to come out of the church that's going to awaken the dead. It's going to awaken things that have been dormant, that's been lying still yeah. too long. And we're going to see a lot, a lot, a lot forevermore. Now, I want to say Easter, it's a pagan word, but Passover, I believe it's this Sunday. If I were you, because I'm going to do it, I'd put, I'd set a time. Today is Good Friday, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. I'd set a time. I'd set aside some time to spend with the Lord. Don't make it just a normal weekend. Set aside a time. Have communion and seek Him and wait upon Him. Most of all, to have fellowship and tell Him how wonderful He is and thank Him for the great sacrifice. Do something different on Sunday morning. Get up before the sunrise. We got up every Passover Sunday for 20 years and drove 25 or 30 miles to be in the Richmond Church at sunrise, to be on the steps and to minister to all the people going up and down the highway. We did it every Sunday for 20 years. That's a legacy. It's a legacy. We took coffee pots and we took oatmeal and donuts that was our breakfast Amen. if we were eating and everybody had to have a song a sermon on those steps we'd sing and then we'd present sunrise hallelujah we would present resurrection god wants you to present the resurrection step over the threshold step over that place you've been before that you're in to that new place that he's in and see what the lord will do See what he'll do. Are you listening? See what he'll do. Lift your hands. Now we need to praise God for Israel. We're getting ready to go, as far as I know. Been one of the strangest tours I've ever done. We told what we wanted. They said, we'll get back with you. And then the person in charge got the flu. But so for seven days, we didn't hear from him. I'm just telling you. Nobody knows what we've done. It's just... Bonnie and myself and then Arlene got in on it. We said, we're not telling anybody anything. At least they get upset. We're going to trust God. It was cancel, 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 cancel. We don't want to do it that way. They were offering us something that God didn't want. And we said, we're not going to take that. We don't want that. God's got something better. Come on, you got to hold that. God's got something better. Hallelujah. They want to stop. They want us to stop twice before we got there in other countries. Are you kidding? I would probably get the people back together after the first time. I know because I took a tour once and they told me I had the worst tour that was ever been in Israel. I said, I know. That's why I'm trying to get into Israel. They're going to change. They told me that in New York. And they held our suitcases and kept us there a whole day because the people, they weren't just loud, they were rowdy. I thought, you need another baptism. You need to go back to Israel again. I'm just telling you a lot of people don't want to talk about these things. But God wants us to sit upright, stand upright. They kept our luggage. We got there early in the morning. They kept us up 10 that night. He had a, I saw him do it. I watched him do it. I watched the man get out of the booth and go up to the big booth. And I thought, what is he doing? Here's what he said. I saw his lips. They just come back from Israel. I thought, oh, we're in trouble. Right then, I knew we had to pay a price for going to Israel. They kept us there for eight hours. Actually, it was longer than that. It was 12, 14, 16 hours we sit in the airport. Hallelujah. I gotta run to Richmond faster than that. Glory to God, lift your hands. Now, when you bless Israel, there's this unusual blessing in your life. The Bible says they shall prosper that love her. That's what he said. They shall prosper. And I have lived to see that. They shall prosper that love her. I have lived to see it. I don't want to tell you about all my goal, but I have lived to see God bless me for endorsing Israel and praying for her and living there. It's the whole oasis of the earth. Hallelujah. La ba da ba la ba ye la ba da ni ya la ba ni ya de ya la ba ya 
Oh, shit, I didn't know, 